here? We could send the gatekeeper Spieler microphone to the main <laughs> way. Over here, I could send uh, the Hugo's music to Sweet Spot again until I got a memo. Uh, <laughs> but it gives us some flexibility, uh, and that's kind of the hallmark of this system: is we can do whatever we need to do, and we can hook things together in ways that may not have been possible before. It gives us the opportunity operationally to do some cool stuff like this. Uh, if we go here. <coughs> In most of the major rides, they have a touch screen that looks like this. This is our non-working prototypical example. You can arrange to put this in your home for a little six-week trial. Um, <laughs> on that screen would be this. And we're going to imagine an imaginary world. A world where the impossible is possible. Maverick has broken. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and, and you're in the tunnel on the ride. And you've been there for about three minutes. And the ride operator finally goes, oh my god, they've been in the tunnel for like three minutes. Touches this button. When they talk on their microphone, you're the only person that they're talking to. We'll be right down in a little bit to get you guys out. We're gonna, you know, tag the ride out. We'll be right down. That gives them the ability to talk to the lift hill, queue line, entrance. It's pretty versatile. We can also turn the platform music on and off. We can also turn the tunnel effects on and off. Why? Because in the imaginary world where Maverick could break, the train could stop right on top of that prox and the kaboom effect would be over. It also gives them the opportunity to use some auto spiels. And what an auto spiel is, is let's say again, imagine a world where Maverick has broken. Uh, the operator would be required to say things like, hey, Maverick's broken, we don't know when it's gonna be fixed, but if you wait in line, you might get to ride. Or whatever the spiel is. But while they're doing that spiel, they can't work on the ride. So we have an auto spiel now. So they click on this, and it comes up with maintenance is on the way, maintenance is here, it's gonna be, no, it's gonna, just get out. <laughs> so, uh, but what it really does for them is it gives them the opportunity to assist with getting the ride up faster if they're not thinking about how to make spiels. Uh, and it's become really popular in operations for us to do that. When we put this in other locations, we're going to do these same kinds of things. It started out with two or three, now we're like 25. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, there's some operational stuff too, like they can. You know, there's a guest injury, there's a rider who just can't get on and off easily, or uh, weather delay, weather, you know, all these sorts of things. But all those auto spiels are there to kind of smooth over the operation and things. The other thing it lets us do is some flexibility and theming. For instance, if you ride, uh, we put this coaster, it's pretty popular, it's called Steel Vengeance. Mm -hmm. I heard of it. There's a name on the side of the train that's related to one of the characters in the backstory. When they dispatch that train, if, uh, the train launches and that character speaks. So if you're riding the train that says chess, they dispatch Chess. Chess goes, hang on to your hats. We're going to throw you over the hill or whatever she says, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, for instance, here she is now. Hold my sass for real. We're in for some twisted turning and ricocheting. So, so it's pretty cool. Um, it, it lets us do some of that immersive theming things that we hadn't been able to do in the past that we can do now. Uh, all of this folder all is about recording audio and doing some mix. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm trying to do a tour, Jess. Seriously. It's enough. Um, we can do recording here. Almost all the things you hear in the park that is a voice being spoken was recorded here. I mean, uh, like like this guy. Who's this guy? He's kind of a jerk. Get ready. You're holding the thrill card. Hold on. You're holding the thrill card. Hold on. Oh, wait, that's me. Um, sometimes we use local talent because we're... Uh, inexpensive and handy. Um, <laughs> so uh, you'll, you'll hear uh, like in the park no smoking announcements that goes on our day calendar. So we have an everyday time slot calendar so we can play don't smoke in the park, be sure to visit back beat queue, um, uh, and all that sort of stuff. From a safety perspective if you go down to the police department you can go to their keypad and enter a 746 digit code and you can get access to the emergency announcements so we have an emergency announcement for practically every conceivable emergency <laughs> ever the national weather service has determined there's bad weather in the area please find shelter um, the neat thing about this system instead of the phone lines is that plays everywhere it plays in the lift hills plays in the tunnels plays everywhere uh, it's really pretty cool uh, this system is something we've got out to demonstrate. Uh, in the morning, we have a morning show uh, with a countdown clock and uh, stuff like that. When it gets to zero, um, uh, people run through the gates and go ride rides. And they throw out t-shirts and stuff. Well, also when it gets to zero, it shoots streamers into the air. And ancient technology back as recently as 2019 involved a box and a button and a finger, <laughs> waiting for that to get to zero. <laughs> Send that circle off. Uh, Victor here, uh, with the uh, Keeper of the Amazing Hair, has devised this cool box with buttons and lights and things to control this 120-volt outlet so that 
when the timer gets to zero, QSYS triggers the launch of the streamers like this. See, we spared practically no expense to yeah. do you with our technical pros. Um, Victor can also start and stop the track from his iPad. Thank you for stopping that before it goes further. <laughs> That's my of course. That's my of course. Yeah, plenty of course. Jackster has the big backrest, like that chair over there. <laughs> Well, they don't have a lift walk, they have a lift elevator. Oh, they do? Yeah. Get to. <laughs> Without getting yelled at. Yeah, well, let's see if it's like Gemini. I'll be parking a train. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't have the pressure up high enough, uh, so you're not getting. Can't really park a train. I've then. only got it at about 20 psi right now because I didn't want it slamming shut. If I jacked it up to 100, yes, you'd be <laughs> just like Gemini. <laughs> so from Vortex? Yep. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Something amazing. Not in trouble. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, they moved the crib for a while, but that's not a machine in shop. This used to be that machine in shop. They just got the person. Yeah, I guess that's too bad. Yeah. 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 Wouldn't doubt it. Foam yeah. injected into a wall, and then there's steel backing plates here and here, and then the whole thing sealed with fiberglass. So it's, it's a lot of work to make one of these chairs. Luckily, the same cylinders that aircraft use are flaps. Oh, so wow. when the pilots put the flaps down, you know, five notches, five degrees, these will go down 
and it'll push back up and lock it there. That way all that force isn't on the uh, linear actuator, it's on the lock. Really cool. And then they move it and this will extend back out just like it does when it releases the harnesses. So what are these off of versus these? Um, these are drags from Millennium, this is Maverick. A little bit different style of a restraint. You can see them actually sticking through the backs right there. Oh, yeah. uh, that's the collar of access where we can get in. And, um, there's actually an Allen key. It's a five millimeter Allen key right here. You can loosen this up manually without power here, and it'll release that as well. See you tomorrow. Probably. The fiberglass. <laughs> Probably not too. Yeah, the Yeah, that's just dragster. All these Intamins just have so many issues. Wow. Oh, man, that thing's hefty compared to the others. That's what I was Just gone. Tumor, Gemini opening, opening, or opening, opening around the time of opening. See, they stole the photo eyes. You look at the control panel. Exactly what we have now, just ours does not have the arrow logo. There's the control system, control system for
starting using Magnum's third tunnel. Of course. Six flags. Magnum's upside down. It's my ride. Well, I've seen it, but. <laughs> Whoa. That's cool. Notice the supports are not hollow. I don't understand why. <laughs> Doesn't this tunnel seem smaller when you're flying through it? <laughs> it feels so short and tiny and like closer to closer to you. Construction on Snake River Tours second uh, station over by the Sky Coaster. Uh, I don't think the Sky Coaster would be uh, certified to operate in this condition. <laughs> but uh, I was told that, uh, wow, I've done quite a bit. I was told they were going to convert the old uh, Shoot the Rapids station into its station, and that looks like it may not be the case. It might be. It might be the Q area, perhaps. As you can see, the bridge over there to the island is has been raised significantly, so I guess the boats are able to go back there all the way over to Millennium Force. Uh, Millennium Force's two air time hills. <laughs> Can't take this shot normally. Red train has yet to go through service. And parts of yellow train. Wow, look at that. There's the bumper. <laughs> Not a very good bumper. <laughs> Um, as we go through today, you guys are allowed to take as many pictures as you want. Please no climbing or touching the uh, vehicles and stuff, getting up on them, things like that. We're going to be going through three different sections. The first section is our steel vengeance and the B&M section. The next workshop is going to be the aerodynamics workshop. And I'll gather you guys up when we move to this next section. Cool. So this is B&M's and steel vengeance.
Stuff wheels are off. B and M's. Yep. High quality coasters. Would you say there's any like, uh, are the B and M coasters easier to work on than like the Intamins? B and M coasters are are pretty simple. I mean, uh, they're they're straightforward. Just follow the manual. You know, anything that um, would fail, there's parts on the shelf to replace with. So, um, and, and B and M's really easy to deal with. Which yeah, Intamins a little tougher to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> How's RMC? <laughs> RMC has definitely been another challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Arrow Shop. Best manufacturer. Another cleaner. It shows you how many arrows they have. Oh, yeah. it's their, <laughs> they have a separate shop. Though. Hey, it's lap bars. Those could be Gemini or Magnum. They're Gemini, they're Gemini. Those yeah. are Gemini lap bars, yes. Everybody having a good afternoon so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arms up, arms up, arms up. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> they didn't change the restraints, I'm sad. Rip. Uh, yeah. No, that's a Magnum car. It's got upstop wheels. So here's our restraint release. There's a pedal in the front of the car that connects to this. That, I guess, drags a chain, I'm told. It does something underneath there that releases all lap bars for the car. They're not on it. <laughs> so here's the manual release on Magnum. It's going to be confusing because Gemini was on the front of the cars and the Magnum was in the back on the lead car. Press that, all lap bars come unlocked. There's the proxy bar. Oh yeah, upstop wheels. That's where they all went. Oh wow, okay, that's cool. That is super cool. I bet these, this here's Gemini. Yeah, there it is. Gemini's top paths are all missing. <laughs> these are all Gemini cars. <laughs> Yeah.
and old corkscrew, I'm guessing. Behind the bus. Sky ride, Max Air. Yeah. Really, more iron dragon. Uh, that <laughs> yeah, that's iron dragon. Yep. There's slingshot. Oh, we found it. <laughs> that's yep. Yeah. Those vengeance? Yep. Are we paying vengeance already? Trains already? Seats. Uh, these things needed a repaint at least. I hated this thing. This came from Jagger Lake. Over on the wall over there, folks, that's all the that's all the, the ride cars that we've painted out here in the last seven years since we've had this facility. Some of the decals, we'll take them off. Hmm. I'd really like to save some more, but we don't always think of it, and we can't always save them. Yeah, I was gonna say some we destroy them. most. Yeah. We destroy take most them. of them, taking them off. I don't know. I noticed the Gemini fiberglass part of the train is missing. Is that getting repainted somewhere, or? No, they take them off every year for okay. for the, they take them apart every year mm. when they rebuild them. And uh, so no, they Gemini got painted about four years ago. Okay. Three years ago. Maybe. What's about the like return time? How, how often are? How often? Yeah. Eight to ten years, roughly. Oh. I've been I've been doing. I've been working out here in this shop and doing this for 10 years now, and I think there's four or five things that we've done twice oh, okay. so far. Some of them get beat up, like the steel vengeance seats over mm -hmm. there. Yeah. It's only two years old, right. but the seat belts really beat them up. So that's why they're repainted. Oh, I bet those are Gemini trains underneath that tarp or mine ride. Express. I understand this ride pretty well. Oh, pouches. Okay, I'm not riding this ride for another two months. Three months. Oh, vengeance. What a problem. Interesting that the seat belts were so rough on the face. Yeah. Junior Gemini! It's got arrow wheels. <laughs> These are mine ride trains. Yeah. No arrow wheels, probably S and S. Oh, there's the chain dog. That's cool. Up stop pads.
I'm on. I'm in. 